So I just finished going over the sign law with you, but I wanted to just sort of start by showing you a situation where the sign law fails and this kind of presents a need for a new strategy. Let's say if this is angle B, big B, right? I've got little b. So you can see here, I've got angle B, right? I'm solving for little b. I'm just gonna label this big A and this would be little a. You can see a problem arises here because I don't actually have a value for big A, right? I'm missing big A, I've got little a, and I don't have B. So you can see I've got two unknowns. See the sign law fails here and we're left with the need for a new strategy. Fortunately enough, we have one. This one's called the cosine law. This guy looks kind of familiar. If you just take a look at the first three terms here, this looks like Pythagorean theorem. I like to think of this as Pythagorean theorem with a correction factor. This correction factor helps for the fact that we're not working with a right triangle. So I'll just show you this quick little geometer sketch pad demonstration I've got here. This is gonna just prove that this formula works for our cosine law calculations. I'm gonna label these side lengths, so A, B, and C, that's just the length of my sides. If I take the square of those, I'm just gonna square each of those measurements, because you can see I'm working with squares in this formula. I'm just gonna measure one angle, which happens to be angle C here. What I'm gonna do is show you that if I add A squared plus B squared, and I subtract this correction factor of 2ab times the cos of that angle, I get c squared, okay, this value right here. Doesn't seem super useful, but it actually is. It helps us solve for unknown angles and sides. It's just like with the sine law. There is a situation where the sine law doesn't work and you just saw it, okay? We don't have a side angle pair, so we're gonna refer to this cosine law. So let's use the cosine law to solve for side c here, okay, in this triangle that we were just looking at. So I write out my cosine law, it looks really nasty, but it's not really that complicated to solve for side lengths. Okay, you're gonna start just by identifying, labeling the sides in your triangle. So let's just call this little a, little b. Okay, now we're just gonna substitute those values into our formula. So I've got five squared, I've got six squared. I'm gonna subtract two times a, b, and I'm gonna multiply the times the, the cos of this angle here. Okay, you can see if I didn't have this angle, I would not be able to solve. I would just end up with another unknown and I've got two unknowns. I wouldn't be able to work with this formula. Fortunately, we do have an angle. It's very important to note that this side C has to be across from this angle C, okay? If these are different, you're not gonna be working with the right formula and you're gonna run into a mess. What I like to do is I like to just kind of let my calculator do a lot of the heavy lifting here. I would just punch all of this in just how you see it. In fact, you could even type it in this way. You, you could just take the square root of the entire side. So you could just type square root and then let your calculator do all of that heavy lifting. Either way, you're, you're just gonna end up with a, a number you gotta take the square root of, and, and that should give you a value for C. Everybody's calculators are different, but just play around with yours and see if you can arrive at this answer. So just like with the sine law, we can use the cosine law to solve for an unknown angle if we have to. You can see there's a situation here, a very unique situation where I have no angles in my non-right triangle, but I have three side lengths. If I substitute in all of these side lengths into my formula, just by labeling my sides with little letters, everything has been substituted in, but I am still missing one angle. Anytime you've got one unknown in your formula, you can solve for that unknown. So we're gonna do that using some algebra. Now this is going to be quite a lengthy process for some people who do not enjoy algebra. Just remember, you know, you can always move something to the other side of the equation. If it's positive, you can move it over by subtracting. And if it's negative, you can move it over by adding. However, you have to be careful. You can see this last piece here. This is all attached to this cos C by multiplication. Okay, there's multiplication in here everywhere. What I see a lot of people do is just say, well, I'm gonna take this and, and I'm gonna move this by adding it over to the other side, okay? You can't do that because this is all attached by multiplication. So just be careful not to break any algebra rules in the process here. Let's try to get C by itself. So we're gonna solve for cos C first. In order to do that, we're gonna bring these two guys over. These ones we can, we can subtract over to the other side, okay? These are just positive numbers. We can subtract them over to the other side and you can see I've done that here. Next thing, I gotta deal with this mess of numbers. I'm gonna do that by dividing both sides by that mess of numbers. Okay, remember they're being multiplied. You can get rid of them by dividing and you see that they cancel out nicely. I've got the cos of C isolated. That's great, that's gonna help me solve for C. You can type all this stuff into your calculator and you're gonna get some nasty decimal number. That's okay, but if you're gonna do that, just be careful and try to round to four decimal places. Okay, if you don't round a four, you're gonna get kind of like a inaccurate answer when you take the cos inverse. 
because I'm a little picky, I like to let my calculator do a lot of the heavy lifting and I just take the cos inverse of this entire mess, but I'm comfortable with my calculator. So I, I don't I don't really see a problem with that. But if you want to just, you know, round to four decimal places, feel free to do so. Okay, so what I like to do is I type cos inverse, I open a bracket, I open a new bracket, and I type the numerator followed by a closed bracket. I push divided by, and then I open a new set of brackets, type the denominator, and then I close that bracket. And then I'm careful to also close the final bracket that I initially opened. Okay, so you gotta be very comfortable with your calculator to do it this way. But you know, either way, you should end up with approximately 48.19 degrees. You don't want to be off by more than two decimals. Okay, so that's solving for an angle using the cosine law. One of the confusing things about the sine law and cosine law is knowing when to use which. I find the cosine law is very easy to identify. If you're giving three sides and, and you've got no angles, that screams cosine law. Another situation is where you have two sides and they're contained angle. This is sometimes referred to side angle as side. That was the first situation we looked at where we had a side, an angle, and a side. Notice that the angle is contained within two sides. That's a red flag that you need to use the cosine law. As usual, thanks for watching.